Okay, for this example, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Sapphire Plugins Film Damage plugin running inside of After Effects. Uh, these are the same plugins that work inside of Final Cut Pro, Motion, Premiere, and Combustion as well. And what Film Damage is going to do is it's going to add dust and scratches and grain and hair and all sorts of film uh, imperfections that you'd find in typically uh, uh, unmaintained, not well-preserved older film. It's going to do this on a universal basis, so when I go ahead and, and apply film damage, it's going to give me these global parameters, uh, and it's going to apply everything. But you've got the ability to individually turn any one of these different elements on or off, as well as control a lot of sub-details to each of the elements which as well, which I'll show you in one sec. So I want to go ahead and play this clip for you through here, though. You can see the... Uh, shot with some nice colors so we can actually pull out some of the saturation in a little bit and now uh, what I want to go ahead and do is just apply the film damage plugin so I'll go to my effect editor go to my sapphire stylize and accept the film damage so you can see instantaneously it's darkening the image somewhat it's adding a lot of grain pattern uh, there you can see there's a, a scratch here and I'll take a look at some of the different plugin controls so you see that it's got all these master controls. It doesn't actually look like it's got a whole lot of controls. That's because most of them are hidden at first. Um, I think this parameter has actually close to 70 controls and it's probably our largest plugin in terms of the different number of parameters you can adjust. Um, just to show you here, I've got overall controls for each of the elements. So I've got my stains. I'll just zoom in here. I'll just go down and show you. I've got my stains, my dust, my hairs, my scratches, camera shake, vignette, flicker and defocus and within each of these I can really go ahead and start to specifically tweak any single one element within any of these so the first thing I want to show is just the stain density uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn up the stain density and it, again it's just more of an overall master control so you can see as I start to turn this up it's adding all these different stains these random stains throughout the image um, of course if I want to turn these off and I didn't want any stains in the image let's say I just want to dust and hair and all the other elements very easy I just set this to zero and uh, all of the sub-controls beneath it aren't affected. But anyway, let's go back, turn up the stain density here, and actually show you some of these sub-controls. So I've got this arrow to the left of the stain details, uh, actually facing the stain details, and that tells me I can click on it, it's gonna show me a whole bunch of sub-parameters. So you can see here, I'm not just controlling the overall number of stains, but if I want, I can uh, step in and I can control the, uh, the opacity of the stains here. Well, let me just move over and show you that. So I can control the opacity of the stains, I can control the, uh, the stain on the print versus the stain on the negative, uh, and the stain color. So let's just go ahead and adjust the opacity. So we'll see we have them uh, almost completely transparent here. Crank that back up. I can adjust my stain colors too, so let's say I wanted different colors, I can do that as well. Um, depending on the, uh, the type of stains, depending on what was spilled on it, you can adjust those quite easily. Uh, but again, if I don't want to adjust any of the stain controls, I can simply turn my stain density to zero, and uh, any of these sub-controls here are now uh, null and void. Um, let's go ahead and just turn up the stains a little bit. Uh, I also want to show you some of the hair controls. So we've got the uh, the overall hair amount here, and I'll zoom in to show you the hair controls. Uh, as I go ahead and, and adjust this, you'll see all these scanned hairs are actually showing up on on the camera here, or on the uh, on the clip, as though they were they were caught in the camera lens. Uh, I've got all these details for the hairs as well, so I can control the size of the hair, um, how large is the hair, what's the opacity of the hair. Hair persistence, you'll see up here, is actually how long does the hair stay on screen for. Um, we can go ahead and, and crank that up longer to see, uh, keep it on each frame a little bit longer. Uh, hair color, we can adjust that as well. Go ahead and close that up and show you some of the shake amplitude. Um, so shake is going to give you that projector gate roll. So I'll go ahead and uh, turn up the shake amplitude here and show you that control. So when I go ahead and turn up my shake amplitude, it's actually going to give me that camera roll. I'm going to have to play this out for you a little bit just to show it to you. So I've turned up my shake amplitude. I'm going to play this back here. You can see there's a lot of hair and a lot of dust, and now there's that camera shake. So you've got that stuck in the projector gate type of roll, and it's, it's pretty frequent here. Now what you can do, which is interesting, with any of these, uh, these shake controls with the camera roll, you can actually go ahead and adjust your border height here. So let's say I want a really thin border. I don't want this big black space between it. I can go to my shake details and I've got what's called interframe border height. And that there is just determining the, uh, the size of the border between the top and the bottom frame. So I can, again, make that really fat and really thick. Or if I start to turn it down, you're going to get a really narrow border. I actually can turn it off if you set it to zero um, between your different frames. Now, you can also add a bit of motion blur, which is pretty cool. It's going to take a little bit longer to render, but you get this nice uh, blur to it as well. And as the camera shakes between frames, you get this really nice directional blur there. You can see that. Um, we've also got vignetting, so I've got my vignette darkness I can go ahead and adjust to. That's just going to give you these uh, this outer darkness around the borders. 
just that, as well as a uh, camera defocus. So defocus is just going to give you this random um, clip of the a uh, random shot of the clip being in and out of focus. Turn that up a little bit, and when we play this back here, you'll see it's also going in and out of focus along with the camera shake and the motion blur. So those are some of the controls within Film Damage. Again, all of your master controls are laid out um, fairly precise from top to bottom, and within each of those, there's a whole bunch of sub-controls. So you can then go ahead and really start tweaking in any of the different parameters uh, you'd like. Uh, one more thing I want to show is the color correction option up at the top here. I forgot to mention that before, but that's uh, also very useful, especially if you're going for a certain era uh, of film. Um, say you want a certain look to it, and you can go ahead and actually open up your color correction option and uh, you've got some saturation here, and say this is shot, say you had building jumpers wearing kamikaze outfits shot in the, uh, in the 40s, well, you can go ahead and take down your saturation here to pull out some of the color and to further give it that aged look to it. So that is film damage.